Good morning, Mets fans, and happy Friday. And I'm happy because the Mets don't have to play the Yankees anymore. Last night was the culmination of four really um, unfortunate games. The Mets now sit at 13 games under 500. Their their worst record in five years. Uh, yeah, if I could have erased this week, I, I would have loved to because these games were brutal. Um, losses abound. Poor pitching last night. Um, but I guess the silver lining is the Mets made the games close, kind of. I don't know. Is that silver lining? Maybe. But the, the, the story today is Steven Matz, and what the hell are the Mets going to do with this talented kid who can't seem to figure things out? In Steven Matz, the Mets have what should be a young, left-handed throwing, middle of the rotation, slash upper part of the rotation, pitcher who's under team control for the next several years and will provide a terrific service and terrific value for that price. What they have instead is a guy who can't seem to stay on the field because he's always injured. And of late, when he's on the field, we'd rather he be injured. Uh, he, he's he's been he's been tough to figure out. I don't know uh, I don't know what his deal is. I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, I would just love for him to be better. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I don't I don't know that there's any fixing him other than letting him run out there and figure it out. You know, on uh, in the games in as the action is unfolding. As he's slouching his shoulders last night, yeah, I have to admit, um, I, I didn't want to watch the game last night. I watched the first inning. I watched Mats get himself into trouble. I watched him and his body language completely, completely change, and clearly making himself look like he was down in the dumps. And I didn't want to watch anymore, and I got to be honest, I didn't turn the game back on. I picked my kids up at my parents' house last night, and I did not want to turn the game back on when I got home. And honestly, I didn't. My kids and I watched the movie instead. So, uh, you know, moving on from Steven Matz uh, on to, I, I guess, a brighter side in last night's game. Um, and this has been a brighter side on the Mets team for, for a little while now, and it's Curtis Granderson. Um, Curtis Granderson's proving that we were all wrong about him uh, at the beginning of the year and proving himself to be a, a valuable player in 2018 and beyond. And I, I do believe that he has value for the Mets. And um, my hope is that he's brought back as a fourth outfielder um, if he's willing to accept that and if there's no market for him elsewhere. Uh, you know, I, I would suspect that if there was a market for Curtis Granderson elsewhere, he would have been traded now um, because the trade would would uh, would cost much less than signing him as a free agent would cost. But um, that remains to be seen, and it also remains to be seen how he closes out the season. If he's able to have a successful last month of the season um, and kind of keep these numbers going. I mean, Curtis hit his 19th home run last night. Um, he's really only been playing solid baseball, you know, taking out the first month and a half. He hasn't been playing solid baseball since the middle of May, or the end of May, really, or closer to the end of May. So, what, two, two and a half months? Um, Curtis Granderson's proving that he's not done, and uh, he's the kind of guy who I've mentioned before would make a terrific clubhouse presence on any team, um, but particularly for this Mets team, which is young, and could use some uh, someone of, of Granderson's caliber in the dugout and in the clubhouse. Uh, even if he's not playing every day, he's proven the ability to come off the bench. Uh, he's proven the ability to still have power and still be a dangerous hitter. He's proven that he can be a late inning replacement. He can still run very well, so he could be a potential pinch running candidate. Uh, I just think it makes a lot of sense to consider bringing Granderson back for next year. Uh, so the Mets start a series tonight uh, with um, the Marlins. Yay! Uh, I'm I'm <laughs> I don't know. I'm 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 just afraid to see Sam come into City Field and hit home runs like Judge hit the other night, um, which was insane. By the way, I didn't mention it the other night after the after the game, but 
that judge home run, there's no way that was less than 500 feet. That was an absolute bomb. Um, so, whatever. Uh, oh, and I'll mention also, since I mentioned Judge, um, our version of Judge, uh, little scooter, Michael Conforto, did not have a very good series against the Yankees. In fact, he had a poor series. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just kind of typical Mets fandom uh, where we don't get to have nice things and the Yankees always do and it's just it's just frustrating as a Mets fan but you know there's always 2015 I guess when we came so close but anyway that'll wrap it up for today um, I, uh, I'm sorry for my somber mood but I'm hoping that uh, the Mets don't f uh, f uh, fall deeper into the depths of the under 500 club hitting 14 under after tonight I hope that doesn't happen but Chris Flex will be on the mound uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm not even making a prediction about it. So, weekend series is going to be what it'll be. Um, I'd like to see the Mets get two games and just show some signs that they're they're, they're not completely finished for this season. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Like I said, so uh, I'll be back on Monday at some point. I'm going to be driving on Monday out to Western Pennsylvania, so I'll have a lot of time in the car. Hopefully, I'll have a car that I can actually clip my phone into. That would be lovely. Um, if I do, I will record a video on my way out to uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, if I don't, oh well, then I'll talk to you guys late next week. So until then, um, thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you're not already doing so at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.